hard-won crop of maize goes into a store in Nakuru in central Kenya. But just as anywhere else where food material is stored, a variety of insect pests are waiting to move in to destroy the crop. Pests such as the maize weevil, or the brookid beetle, seen here on cowpeas, can cause untold damage. Not only do they cause weight loss, but also any contamination with live or dead insects can lead to the food being downgraded or even rejected outright by the consumer. It's vitally important to destroy the insects before they cause serious damage. One of the most effective ways to do this is by fumigation. The food is kept in a gas-tight enclosure, such as a sealed grain silo or other type of sealed store, or under a good quality gas-tight sheet. A fumigant is introduced and retained with the insects long enough to kill them. One of the most effective fumigants is the gas phosphine. Remember that all fumigant gases can also kill humans. They must be used with the greatest of care. In stores where there is phosphine in the air, pest control staff must wear a gas mask with a phosphine absorbing canister. Even better, a self-contained breathing apparatus if available. Phosphine gas is generated from a solid chemical called aluminium phosphide. It may be obtained as tablets or the smaller pellets. Sachets or blankets. They're all supplied in airtight containers because they release phosphine gas on contact with the moisture present in air. This starts to happen in less than an hour. As phosphine has only a mild garlic-like smell, most preparations of aluminium phosphide also contain a chemical that releases ammonia to act as a safety warning. In cool climates, magnesium phosphide is often used, but it's not suitable for tropical climates as it generates phosphine too quickly. So where the temperature of the commodity to be fumigated is 15 degrees centigrade or over, use aluminium phosphide. In a typical phosphine fumigation, the gas concentration rises rapidly during the first two days and then begins to fall. For a successful result, it's important that by the fifth day of treatment, the gas concentration remains above 150 parts per million, or 0.2 milligrams per litre. This will ensure that all life stages of most insect species have been killed. An exception are the tiny insects called socids, shown here on rice grains. They are much more difficult to kill. We will mention these again later. The first point to remember is that fumigation may only be undertaken when there will be no danger of escaping gas accumulating in human habitation. The store must be 100 meters away from the nearest dwelling. If not, people must be kept out of their homes for the duration of the fumigation for their own safety. Phosphine fumigation is only effective in situations where there is good gas retention such as bag stacks covered with gas-tight sheets, weighed down at the edges with sand snakes. It's essential that the sheets are completely gas-tight. If they're to be used regularly, a laminated PVC sheet of about 0.4 mm thickness is ideal. The sand snakes may be made from any durable tubing, such as old fire hose filled with sand they should not be overfilled and should lie flat. 
even better gas retention can be achieved by sealing bag stacks into a plastic envelope. A base sheet is laid on the floor of the store. The bag stack is built on the sheet. And the cover placed over the stack. The cover is then sealed to the base sheet to create an airtight envelope. The advantage of this system is that the air tightness can be checked before fumigation takes place. This is achieved by creating either a pressure or a vacuum in the envelope. In a vacuum test, air is removed by a commercial vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner is turned off. And then the rate at which the vacuum is lost is assessed using a manometer. Some freight containers, silos and cypress bins are given a gas-tight seal during construction. But the seal on these must also be checked by pressure testing. To do this, a conventional manometer may be used or for small structures such as freight containers, it's easier to use a pressure decay timer like the contester, which automates the test. It's essential that any structure being fumigated does not leak gas too quickly. Unsealed stores, silos and containers, and those that fail a pressure test cannot be fumigated. Most stores and many silos fall into this category. Few freight containers are gas tight. They may have to be fumigated under gas tight sheets. When bagged grain is being fumigated, gas can circulate freely between the sacks. But in large bulks in silos, flat stores and ships holds, gas circulation may be poor. In these situations, the fumigants may be added by a phosphine tablet dispenser as the grain is loaded into the silo. Another option is to insert piping into the grain using a pneumatic hammer. The fumigants may then be fed down the piping. To summarize so far, remember only fumigate where the store is at least 100 meters away from human habitation, where it is gas tight, and where there is good gas circulation. Now let's turn to how to achieve a good fumigation. We shall take as our example the most common form of fumigation in the tropics, the treatment of bag stacks under gas tight sheets. Before a fumigation, the store should be inspected thoroughly. The floor must be in good condition without any cracks. If you find cracks that might lead to significant gas loss, either fill them in with cement, mastic, or bitumen, or cover the floor with a gas-proof sheet on which the bag stack can be rebuilt. During the inspection, 
confirm the tonnage of stock to be fumigated. This is important for the calculation of the fumigant dosage. If you are unsure of the tonnage, or if free space will be included under the fumigation sheets, you will need to calculate the volume of the stack. First, measure the stack. Then simply multiply the length by the width by the height. This will give you the volume. In typical tropical situations where temperatures are above 25 degrees centigrade, you will normally require one and a half three gram tablets for each cubic meter under the sheet, or two tablets for each ton of food. But please remember that national recommendations are quite variable. Paddy rice and ground nuts in shell absorb a large amount of phosphine, reducing the concentration to which insects are exposed. To compensate for this, these commodities require higher dosages. The exact dose required may vary according to variety and should be determined by careful trial fumigation. Some commodities such as linseed and cotton seed are so absorbent that they cannot be fumigated with phosphine. Once the store has been inspected, it should be thoroughly swept. Grain residues should be placed in sacks and moved next to the stack before fumigation. This is important to prevent reinfestation after fumigation. Next, place the fumigation sheets carefully over the stack. They must reach the floor on all sides with an overlap of about one meter. When more than one sheet is required to cover the stack, they must be joined. Overlap them by about one meter. Then fold them together in a flat joint. Secure the joint with clips. The sheets must be checked carefully for any holes. If you find holes, seal them using some spare, clean sheeting and suitable glue. Don't use plastic tape except as a last resort. Neatly fold the sheeting at the corners of the stack to ensure a good seal to the floor. Move the sweepings under the sheet. The bottom of the stack is now ready to be sealed to the floor using sand snakes or loose sand. Seal it everywhere except at the places where the fumigant is to be placed. If you are using sand snakes, always overlap them. Once the stack is sealed, 
all workers other than the pest control team must leave the store. It's now time to add the fumigant. Remember that aluminium phosphide dust is highly toxic, so always wear a dust mask and gloves. Carefully open the flasks of tablets or tins of sachets in a well-ventilated area with a container pointing away from you. If you are using tablets, always place them in a single layer on cardboard trays. If you pile them up, the high concentration of phosphine produced may catch fire. Place the trays under the pallets of the bag stack or in other convenient places. If you are using sachets, suspend them from the sides of the stack. Distribute the trays or strings at various points around the stack to help the gas to circulate quickly. Avoid any possible contact with water as aluminium phosphide may catch fire if wetted. Finally, complete the seal. Now, leave the store. Lock it securely. And to place a safety warning on all doors to keep people out.